So going back to one of the first things you talked about, you you mentioned that you um, often consult about multimedia projects that professors want to bring into their classes, whether that be a video or a podcast, maybe a website. What's the sort of span of multimedia projects that you work with, and what are the type of recommendations that you make to professors when they, they ask you what would be a, a, an appropriate assignment for a, for a given topic? So I love this question. The thing about it is before they even get to the point where they're describing an assignment or talking about an assignment, uh-huh. I ask them what communication forms are important in your discipline. Mm, yeah. So if you have a podcast – are there podcasts that you listen to in your discipline that mm. have an impact on the way that you teach, the way that you think, the way that you learn, the way that you communicate? Right. If there are not, think hard about why you're assigning a podcast to your students uh-huh. because it's there. The assignment is there to be able to um, help students consume information mm-hmm. and communicate information. So that's the first thing I talk about. I say, how how is this communication form going to have an effect on your students' learning. Right. Okay, so as an example, maybe a uh, government major might enjoy making a podcast in the same style as many, like, sort of politics or government podcasts. I know that's sort of a large genre of of spoken word podcasts that people listen to on Spotify, say. Um, But maybe an example of maybe not so much as, like, maybe a dance major or something. Like, that's not something that is often done over podcasts or maybe the the form of the podcast might have to change depending on the discipline right absolutely so um you know and there are many different types of communication forms and i don't Uh look at it as as assignments i look at it as what communication form do you want to study this semester Uh uh-huh right right if i want to study the way that information is transmitted uh through the spoken word Mm -hmm. i'll say great there's a podcast in there somewhere, but right. why don't we start with consuming that okay. spoken word, right? Yeah. And say, we're going to study this communication form this semester. If you're going to study film, video, um, you know, you're studying video. If you're going to study what websites look like and how websites can impact uh, the discipline and impact learning and impact the creation of knowledge, yep. then study that. Don't leave it for an assignment. Okay. Right. Um, an infographic. If you are getting your information from infographics, from posters, from charts. So like if you're an, an economist, for example. Right. Uh, you're probably spending a lot of time looking at charts. So this is kind of a natural thing for somebody uh, in economics might want to study how charts influence the way that um, knowledge is created. Absolutely. Right? And make that be part of the course. Uh huh. So, you know, you could imagine um, somebody in the modern languages or in English might say, well, this is the spoken word. This is something that really lends itself to podcasting. Uh huh. Right. So what I'm hearing from this advice um, is that the the project itself, the assignment that might be a more concrete representation of what the professor wants to give to their students that might happen at the end of the course after studying other examples of that mode of communication so that everyone's on the same page about what it might look like? So ideally, it doesn't happen at the end of the course. Okay. Ideally, it happens three quarters of the way into the course. Uh Uh-huh. What happens at the end of the course is for them to take that um, assessment, to to take that communication form that they've been studying Yep. the entire semester, and then use the things that they learned to critique their own work. Aha, uh-huh. okay. That's so often not done because they want to, you know, faculty members want to assign a final project and then have that be the end-all and be-all. But that really puts the emphasis on the product. Uh-huh. And I prefer to put the emphasis on the learning about the communication form. And if you have some time at the end of the semester to do something like peer review, self-assessment, and reflect on that mm-hmm. product that you've created, um, that's really, from my perspective, the best thing that you can do. Um, and again, making your um, make, making that really explicit to students and really communicating why you're doing it in the order that you're doing it is going to really increase learning, uh-huh. and it's going to improve 
the relationship that you have with your students because they understand why they're doing these things and they understand the value of what they're getting out. And those, that communication is going to really run through your entire course. Uh huh. I love that idea of having students critique their own work and learn from the product that they created in the end. Uh, it reminds me of a class I took freshman year um, that was a, a speech communication class. And one of the final projects, but as you say, is only about three-fourths of the way through the class, was to deliver a speech. And then one of the last assignments in the class was to watch a recording of us all d giving the speech and basically run through a rubric and decide like if we felt like we hit the different points on the rubric, what we would improve if we did the speech again. Is that the sort of critiques that you're talking about? How would you structure a critique for students to learn from that work that they created? So there are many different ways that you can do that final self and peer assessment. Uh -huh. One thing that I really love to do, if we're studying communication types, that, that certainly works. It certainly works to critique how I could have improved things, what the best thing was, what the, what the part that needs more work on is. Right. But I like to focus on storytelling, and I like to focus on the storytelling that each communication form brings, like the power that each communication form has in telling stories. Right. So one other option, and it's been getting a little bit more um, leverage lately, it's been getting, uh, people have been using this more, um, is to really analyze how a different mode of communication would make that story different. How might mm -hmm. this story look if I didn't say it in, a, if I didn't do it in a podcast, for example, if I did it in a video or if I did it on a website, right. how would that change the communication? How would that change the story? Uh, and that opens people's eyes up, not only to the way that they've done a particular assignment, but it opens their eyes up to different ways that they can apply the same concepts to different communication forms. Mm, so yeah. I, I really like that as, a, as an option for students in that in that last segment of the class. I love that because I know a lot of students at William & Mary are taking classes that are out of the zone of material that they'll probably be using post-graduation and knowing that they'll be able to use those skills in other situations, apply some of those lessons to, to other projects down the road would be really valuable. Yeah, I mean, think about it. The the, the gold standard at college when you're asked to do an assignment is five-page paper. Right. Nobody gets their information from a five-page paper today. I don't. Nobody. You get 80% of your information from multimodal forms of communication. Right. Right. Um, so the more faculty members can be adept at assigning these things, at helping students understand the communication that is inherent in these forms of storytelling, uh -huh. the better they're going to prepare their students for what they're going to be doing in the future. Right. I, students who learn to communicate using those same forms are going to be able to create those materials down the road for the, for the next students, right? Absolutely.